you'll see a teardown and better understand the components that make up this Evaporative System Integrity Monitor, ESIM, more commonly known as the Leak Detection Pump, LDP, or EVAP Pump. When this pump fails on your car or truck, the troubleshooting codes that appear include P0455 or P0456, which indicates a small or large leak has been detected in the evaporative emission system. You will fail your emissions tests as a result. Please mention in the comments which states are not as strict. <laughs> I would like to know. Anyway, this is in so many vehicles, pretty much every Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep vehicle, and other manufacturers. This pump costs $30 and is an easy do-it-yourself job. I have a separate video you can watch on replacing this, and I'll put that in the description below, as well as all the tools and supplies I used in this video teardown. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more cool videos like this. Now to show you how this small pump works. So, this here on top, this white plastic, is the housing, or top cover, and on the bottom, this black plastic, is the bottom cover. On the side is where the wire harness connector snaps into, and you'll see this hole here, the insides. There are two check valves inside. They act as weights, actually, and you can hear it when I turn it side to side. You can hear it rattling. That is good, and it is not broken. In fact, if you don't hear it rattling, then, then it's probably stuck from gunk or grime which means you need to replace this. Anyway, another common problem with these are that the O-ring that it comes with gets bad and needs to be replaced. So now I'm going to open this up and show you the insides and explain more in detail. Of course, once I open this up, okay. I won't be reusing this. I'll be using my oscillating tool to cut around this. Now I'll pry it open. Okay, got it. Cool. Here's how it looks, the insides. So, let's take a look at this now. This is the uh, ESIM housing. This is the diaphragm right here. This is the vacuum switch right here. This is where the uh, wire harness connector goes into. This is really just the uh, other side of the ESIM, the cover. Now I'm gonna get that out. I'll remove these weights or check valves. This was rattling before, which is normal. You're probably wondering the purpose of these weights, also known as check valves. They are actually used to relieve pressure and vacuum relief. The shorter weight is the pressure relief, while the longer weight is the vacuum relief. The weights use gravity to function and is why it's mounted in such a specific way. The weights could get stuck from dirt, grime, etc. over time, limiting its movement and causing a fault code. Here's a close up. And the soft stuff in the center are the seals. I believe it's the same material as the diaphragm, uh, the round piece. Diaphragms can get bad, like if there's a small hole or tear in it, then when the vacuum or pressure is applied, the diaphragm doesn't move enough to hit its mechanical switch, which causes failure, which means the entire assembly or this whole unit needs to be replaced as a result. The PCM or computer activates the vacuum switch, also known as the pressure switch, and allows the diaphragm to spring up and down as air goes into it like a vacuum creating pressure. So if the diaphragm doesn't move or is stuck, then an engine code would appear on your dashboard. When you hook up your OBD code reader, you'll specifically realize that your engine isn't bad, but instead you have one of those nasty emission codes, which you'll have to fix. Otherwise, you may not be able to legally drive your vehicle. Again, very easy to replace this, and I have a separate video you can watch on removing and reinstalling this piece. It's in the description. 
Also, doing a smoke test can be costly and more time consuming than just replacing this piece. And by the way, a smoke test can actually overpressurize this and ruin the diaphragm and cause tears in it. So this ESIM or leak detection pump sits right on top of the EVAP canister located near the right rear passenger tire. And this is meant to be a sealed piece so no harmful pollutants escape into the atmosphere. Cars from the 2000s and up all have these. Luckily, as more people transition to electric cars, these will become obsolete and the emission folks will be out of a job. I'm sure they'll come up with some new scheme for electric cars though. Hopefully you learned something interesting today as it's nice to know and appreciate the history and evolution of our automobiles. I have other cool teardowns you can check out on this channel and a quick like and subscribe is always appreciated. Let me know your thoughts on this video and have a great day.